morning. This is Amy from Amy's Free Motion Quilting Adventures. Hitting my camera, making it wiggle. Anyway, I wanted to show you um, some ruler work that I'm doing. I'm doing some curved cross hatching on what I'm calling my farm quilt. It's a commission quilt for someone else. Um, bringing up my top thread before I get started. I've already gone ahead and done the outline of the shapes that I'm filling in with curved cross hatching and now I'm going back in and filling it in. I'm using a curved ruler from Accents and Design. I'm going to go ahead and secure my stitches a little bit before I put that ruler in. There we go. And you get really good after a while of uh, working with these rulers at being able to eyeball the distance you need to um, set your foot from uh, where your ruler's going. And I'm lining up with this line here on the second line on this ruler. This ruler is lined with quarter inch markings so that puts my stitched lines at three quarters of an inch apart which looks really nice for this project. Always making sure that the ruler is solidly against that foot. I don't have much slippage with these rulers at all because they've got a wonderful bit of velcro on the belly of the ruler. But if you find that your ruler is slipping where you want to adjust it is not at the foot because if you adjust it at the foot, you're going to get a very definite bobble. And now I'm traveling up my already stitched line. I'm going to stop, line my ruler back up. And let's make sure my quilt's nice and flat. There we go. You want to make sure you haven't pushed some fabric up against the foot as you go because then you're going to have a little um, bobble or wiggle. It's not going to line up properly. You'll have too much space between your lines. And then you just go right back up. Notice there's some some um, mist forming on my ruler, and that's not because my hands are really hot and sweaty, but because I just washed my machingers. If you've been watching my videos, you'll notice they were looking pretty grubby, and now they're nice and clean. Just washed them out by hand in uh, the sink with a little Dawn dish liquid, and it cleaned them right up. But they're still a little damp. It is a little bit harder to regulate my stitch length, I think, when I am doing this kind of work. It's not very noticeable, um, but because the bed of my machine and my table is not perfectly, perfectly level, um, there's just a little bit of a hang up when the ruler goes across part of the machine bed if I'm not really, really careful. Um, and because this is a nice straight line, I don't have to worry about where am I going. I'm just pushing that ruler against the foot and moving it. It is very easy to start going too fast and getting your stitches too far apart. Again, just lining it up with this previous row of stitches. I do work at a bit of an angle. I'm getting a little rippling there. I'm going to just adjust a little bit on my machine um, because this 6600 has um, AccuFeed system, which is a wonderful, wonderful um, walking foot type um, 
system that is built into the machine, but I do have a little bit of issue with when I'm not using the AccuFeed system and I'm doing some quilting, especially with these rulers. If I run my ruler this way, it touches those AccuFeed feet and it just kind of hampers my motion. So I prefer to kind of do it off to the side. Make sure I've got everything lined up. Now these rulers, because they are a quarter of an inch thick, I think sometimes it's like um, you know, looking at a stick in a nice clear pool of water, it kind of refracts the light so it looks bent. So what you have to do is just be consistent with your lines, um, how you look at them, so that you are lining up consistently. A little bit of a pucker down under. line here, come back up along the edge of my border, and now I'm going to go cross hatching. So I've done my row of lines in one direction, now I'm going to go back across. This um, direction I find a little bit more tricky because I'm on the right side of the needle. I'm just a little smidge too far away. One stitch back. There's a little less room to work here. If you've got a sit down long arm, you're not going to have an issue with this at all. But if you're using a smaller machine, it will be an issue. A smaller ruler may help, however, um, if it's too small, then you're not going to be able to reach across the area you're trying to stitch without having to move your ruler. And I find that's even harder to do without it showing. So just a little extra care with these uh, curved rulers you can kind of rotate everything a little bit and it really helps. Again, if I didn't have the AccuFeed uh, foot or the AccuFeed system hanging off the back of my 6600, it would probably be a little bit easier. Um, I'm hoping to move up to an 82 or 8900 Janome machine. Um, they have an AccuFlex feed foot, which is very similar but much more. You can take a lot more of it off of your machine when you're not using it, so it's not in the way. And I got something going on. Ooh, looky, I am on the wrong line. Gotta watch out for that. So the right line at the top, wrong line at the bottom. It's going to not really matter. I didn't get too off base, so I'm just going to go ahead and stitch it. And I'm going to go ahead and break my thread so I can take a look at where I got off. Make sure I don't need to rip it out and restitch. So let's see what I did. You see, it's just a little bit wider here. Than it is up here, down here, but overall, I don't think anyone will notice it. My customer will be quite delighted with it. This is not a big issue. I probably only the most bitter of the quilt police could find that in this quilt, so I'm leaving it in. Anyway, this is a good time to stop. I hope you've enjoyed watching. This is Curved Cross Hatching. I'm Amy from Amy's Free Motion Quilting Adventures. The blog is freemotionquiltingadventures.blogspot.com. And I thank you for watching. Bye bye.